Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. My name's Tracy, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I make my uh, seat cushion covers for my garden furniture. Um, I've been doing them for quite a while now, and those who are regular to my channel will have seen them evolving as time goes by. But now I've got um, quite, um, I won't say good at it, but quite used to doing them. I've learned a few trips, tips along the way. So I thought I'd share with you how I managed to make them fit nice and snug and um, how I do the shaping. So if I lift this gimbal up, you can see that the, the cushion cover, this is just one side that I've made so far. And this is the actual seat. It's tapered at both ends, more so on one end, but um, the shaping that I do... Um, is even and it works out so this is acrylic yarn and it does stretch so this is how I make it nice and tight all the way around so it is quite um, you know not doesn't go all baggy and and stuff so I'm making this with Aldi yarn and these are the Aldi cakes um, they're not the softest so you know there's not really very much that you can you can do with them I don't think I'd even want this as a on, on next to my skin it's not too rough when you're when you've got it over you but it's no good for for a baby or a child or anything it's just a little bit too a little bit too firm and rough it doesn't feel too bad when I've got it over me like that but I wouldn't want to wear it so it's perfect for the garden furniture because it is quite um quite robust this yarn so um I'm going to do the other side and show you how I put them together and how I do that is I kind of want it to fit this um, cushion cover and to lay on top and just have a little bit of room to spare so I've got kind of I guess an inch or so all the way around because it's not on straight so there'd be an inch maybe inch and a half in places but it fits just right for me um, when I pull it and it, it will go in shape it'll go quite nice so that's how I do it so that's what you kind of want to aim for so that you've got this nice even spread all the way around so what I'm doing is I'm um, using this I think it is let me just check I kind of, it's a 5.5 millimetre crochet hook because although this is supposedly a three weight DK yarn, it's quite chunky for that. And I've got my scissors handy. So how I do that, I've got my yarn inside my yarn bag, which um, is a bit squished up at the moment because there's nothing to keep the sides up. So it's um, not going to roll around the floor. I'm just going to pull out some yarn. And how I do that then um, is by just making a slip knot and a chain of 40. So what you want to do is if you're having if you're doing a cushion, you want to kind of lay it against the cushion and you want that good inch roughly either side for the stretch. So make a slip knot. Now you can do that any way that you you like. I was taught to make a loop, go around the back and pull it through and you've made your slip knot. So insert my hook and I'm going to chain 40. So a chain is yarn over and pull it through that loop. Yarn over, pull it through the loop. And I'm going to do 40 of those. So I will pause the video now um, while I do those 40 because when you count, there's nothing worse than somebody else counting at a different rate and it puts you off. So if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell. You'll be informed when there are new videos. There's a lot coming at the moment. Um, I seem to be uploading a fair amount. So I'm just gonna pause it now and do my 40 chain. I've now done 40. So I want 40 stitches altogether. So I'm going to do one extra for my turning chain. So now we're going to work um, along here and we're go not gonna go into our first chain here from the hook, this loop it doesn't count. This is our first one. So I'm going to go into the second one and I'm going to do, in the UK, a half treble and in the US that's called a half double. We do that by 
yarning over and going into that stitch, yarning over and pulling up a loop. So we have three on our hook. So we yarn over and pull through all three. And that's a half treble in the UK or a half double in the US. So that's how we do that. Now I'm going to do one in every single stitch along. So that's yarn over into the chain, yarn over, pull up the loop, yarn over, pull through all three. I'm just going to do one in every single stitch all the way to the end. Just like that. Okay, so that's what they should be looking like. So I'm going to pause the video then and I'm going to just do one in every chain all the way to the end. Okay, so this is my very last one. There's my knot. So I'm going to do my last one. And now I'm going to turn my work. But before I do, I'm going to make one chain and pull it down. So I don't want it to be um, big. I don't want it to sort of stick up and be confusing as to where my um, my first stitch is. So now we're going to start increasing. Because I worked out just by offering it up the first time that starting off with 40 is kind of nice and it kind of fits like this but it's kind of nice and snug to this side with my inch to spare and then by increasing I increased to 50 so that's what I want to do now I want to start my increases and how I'm going to do that is by doing two stitches in my first stitch so I'm going to do one and two in that first stitch only and then just carry on doing one half treble UK half double US in every single stitch right to the end but that will start to um, shape just right for the edge of my cushion cover I didn't want to do an increase at the start of both ends because it would um, make my increase too rapid um, for the for the shape of the cushion. But if your cushion had a, a much faster sort of curve to it, you might want to do your increases um, both ends at the start in the first stitch and the last stitch but at the moment because this is kind of a gradual um, size increase on that cushion I just want to do it on one end so that's all I'm going to do for now I'm going to pause the video and carry on and I'll pick up with you when I get to the end of this row okay so I'm almost at the end and I just want to show you now that um, you can spot where your stitches are by the V's, then you'll know that this here was your your little chain. That's why I kind of kept it nice and snug. I don't like it sticking out too far anyway. So you just carry on to the very last stitch. And do your last one. Again, one chain, but snug it down and turn your work. <clears throat> and that's how I'm going to carry on just doing one increase in that first stitch only, which is here. And then one in each stitch along. Now this Aldi yarn um, most Aldi yarn that I've been getting recently, it's really improved over the years. But um, where everything else has really improved in its texture and um, there are very few faults in it now, where it used to be full of joins and faults, it's not anymore. It's actually really nice yarn. 
but the one exception are these cakes. Then they are lovely colours. There's some beautiful baby colours, but um, it's not something that I could ever dream of using for a baby. But for household items, making bags, speech bags, anything like that, it's actually really good robust yarn. Um, as you can see, it's not very drapey. It possibly would be if I'd used a larger hook, it would might have had more drape to it. But I didn't really want this to be um, holy. The, the other one, the other cushion that I made in this yarn, I did with a big granny square. And of course, that meant that there are there are holes in it. Whereas I did my other uh, cushions in, with this stitch because it's nice and it's tight so it there's not it's not like a big holy stitch so when it pulls it doesn't pull any kind of gaping holes so um i'm not a fan really of um big gaps in my crochet um unless they've called for you know in a lacy stitch or something i'd much rather have it when it's for something like a cushion cover I'd much rather have it tight and neat like um like this not even using um a UK treble which is a US double crochet I'd just rather use um either a UK double which is a single or the half treble which is the half double because they're nice um snug tight little stitches and they're just perfect for things like this really and um I don't really want uh, anything that's going to start pulling holes. So I'm almost at the end of this round, so I might as well carry on where I've been chatting. And so when you get to the end, you just, you don't increase, you just work into the last one and increase at the beginning of our next row. Round. No, row. It is a row not around is it so this is my end now so um, if you see there there is your last stitch because I snug my chain down so you can see the stitch there is a V so there's my last one my chain which I snug down and I think just pulling out some yarn I think by snugging those chains down it gets you onto the next row it doesn't make it shallower than the rest of your crochet but it makes your edges straight and neat by snugging that last one down you don't get any of those bumpy edges it works on this um, stitch and with um, the UK double which is the US single um, and I'll, when I'm doing a single I will go in sometimes into my end chain rather than my stitch at the end it's so short you'll see you that's you see it kind of easy so that's all I'm going to do now is continue increasing at the start of every row until I have 50 stitches now of course if you've got a cushion that you want to cover you might need less it just depends just keep putting that up against the cushion itself and you'll see as long as you're your one inch gap all the way around is consistent you'll know where the last part of your increases have to be but for me they're 50 so I'm going to carry on now increasing at the beginning of my rows until I've got 50 stitches and then I'll come back to you now I've done all my increasing until I have 50 stitches and you can see it started to come out nicely at the sides if this was the first one then you would now just carry on without increasing until um, you were kind of this far from the end. And you can tell that because if you have, um, if, you, if, you, if you place it here, you can see roughly where you need to start to decrease so that it matches the other side so you you it's kind of here and you start your increase in and then you need to carry on straight along this edge and then start to decrease uh, an equal distance so i find with my i put this one on top 
then you can see it kind of follows the line where where these buttons are just kind of follows that line so it kind of increased to there and then we just carry on straight until we get to the top part of the cushion where we start to taper back in again and um, it's hard to, to show you um, because I can't really zoom out but um, I'm zoomed out all the way I can so now all we've got to do is carry on without increasing once you've done one side of course you've got to just match it up to the one that you've already made so by placing those on top of each other I know that I've got approximately five inches before I have to start decreasing but I can lay one on top of the other matching them up and um, as soon as I see that that's the point point where I decrease then then I can do that it's just a case of the first one you know that you've got perhaps um, four or five inches where you're decreasing well you're increasing at the beginning and then five inches and then the next five are your your decrease um you're decreasing and I'll show you how to do that but for now just keep going straight with no increases at each side until you um until you've reached a point where your cushion no longer needs any I can try and get this up a little bit whoops I don't know if I can do it no stupid thing if you can see this one it kind of tapers up so my my increases are here and then I need to go to this point and then start my decreases it's quite simple when you're looking at it um, once you once you're into the you, the the you've got the kind of length you need it's very easy to see where you stop and you know that this is the amount of um, 10 rows of decreasing will give you exactly the same size as this so um, I'm going to carry on now until my work measures about five or six inches until I need to do my decreasing um, just keep going straight one in each um, exactly the same and turn in doing the one chain but cinching it down and going in the first stitch all the way until you need to start your decrease and then I'll come back to you right so now as i have already got one um, and this is the one i'm going to match it up to obviously with your first one you would be matching it up to your cushion so um there we are i've got an inch all the way around this side and these sides here this side and and this side so more or less it doesn't matter if it doesn't curve it's quite all right so now I have the same amount here as up here. So I'm now ready to start my decreasing. Because I've already completed one, I know the exact amount to match it up. So what I need are 11 remaining rows. And the reason I have 11 remaining rows is because I have 10 decrease rows. And just as we started with one full row without any um, increases we le we finish with one full row without a decrease so we've got a completely perfect edge uh, with no decreasing so now I'm ready to start the decrease rows and all I'm going to do um, just as I increased at one side on every row now I'm going to do that with a decrease instead so um, I need to do my chain and cinch it down as normal and I'm going to yarn over I'll zoom in just for this little decrease so that you can see it better I yarn over and I go into my first stitch yarn over and pull up a loop and then I this is how I do mine I just go into the next stitch yarn over and pull through so I then yarn over I've got one two three four loops on my hook and I just pull through all four of them and that's my decrease I've gone into both those stitches and now I just do one in each stitch all the way to the end 
and I'm going to do this just one at the beginning of each row, not each at each end, just the beginning for the next 10 rows. But the rest of my stitches will all be my UK half treble, which is half double in the US. I just need to pull out some yarn, got stuck on the Velcro on my bag. So I just carry on all the way to the end of the row and the start of the next row again I do another decrease and I just carry on like that until I've got 40 stitches. So that's 10 rows, decrease one at the start of each row will give me back the same 40 stitches that I started with. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to make it to the end and I will show you once again when I get to the end how I start my next row. I've almost made it to the end. I've got two more stitches to do and this is how my last stitch always looks because of the way I do my beginning of the row. So I'm going to do my, my chain, cinch it down so it's not sticking up and turn my work. And here we are, ready to start my decrease. So I'm going to yarn over, pull up my first loop as normal, just go into the next stitch, yarn over and pull it up. So that's four and go through all of the loops. And I'll just go into every other stitch along. all the way to the end and I'm going to carry on doing that for another eight rows until I have 40 stitches so I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to carry on de decreasing by one at the beginning of every row um, for eight rows until I've got my 40 and then I will uh, come back and show you what to do next so this is my very last stitch on my decreasing rows. So I've got 40 stitches. I'm going to do my chain, cinch it down. And now I'm just going to do one row of um, one UK half treble or half double US in every stitch along. So that's just one in every one all the way to the end nice and simple and then when you get to the end I'm just going to um, end off and I will show you how I join it together so I'm going to pause the video and I shall meet up with you when I get to the end of this row okay so I'm almost at the end I'm just going to finish off in my last stitch not gone through both loops hold on there we go and just leave a nice long tail for weaving in and cinch it down and pull it through so now we've got two pieces that are exactly the same and i'm going to match them together so going back to how you judge this this is the cushion so if you needed quite if it was very short space where you um you can do your decrease and increase in then i would do it either end but because i wanted a slow gradual um decrease and increase i did it at just one end but you just kind of manipulate it whichever way you want so now that we've got our pieces it's just a case of putting them together putting them in and securing them so i'll show you on one of the finished ones how i've how i do this now this is my my one i sit on in the garden all the time and um so what i've done is on three edges I have secured them with a slip stitch um, by crocheting all the way along and around the top. So I do this without the cushion inside and then along the third edge. And then when I get to this part, I end off. 
and I'll go around, you know, right around to the beginning of the um, increasing. So this is my, my first row. So then I stuff my cushion in and it is a tight fit at first. And then I over sew just using the yarn or a contrasting colour if you want to be able to see it. And I over sew all the way along this join. This And I, I kind of pinch it together and end off and sew it in. And the reason I do that is because I don't want to put a zip in. I don't want to put buttons on it. I just want to secure it. So if I want to take this out for washing, then all I do is snip this piece of over sewing. You can see the over sewing. You can see every line of it. So I just snip that, pull it out, wash it, put it back in, and then using one of the colours or the same yarn, because I've got a bit left over, I over sew it back shut again. And to me, that's um, far more secure than me putting a zip in or putting buttons in, which you don't really want to lean on. And sometimes they don't, they don't lay nice and flat anyway. They kind of end up dipping and I don't I don't like that look so it's much easier for me just to sew my my cushion in it's not like it's coming off for washing all the time it's just going to sit on the garden furniture but when I feel like it needs a wash I'll undo it take it out wash it and then just tack it back shut again so that's basically how I do that so I'm going to show you with my two pieces just going to get my yarn because I dropped it and it fell to the floor. It's in my yarn box, so don't. It wasn't getting dirty or anything. I just dropped it, so it kind of stayed on the yarn box. So now I want to make sure that I have both the right sides facing outwards, and that just means that, the, that any side is the same. I know, but this is the the first side that I did was the right side. So I want to start at this corner. This is going to be the end that I'm going to sew shut. So I get my yarn and obviously you can sew all your ends in um, before you before you start or after you've finished. It doesn't really matter. So I just, let's just move this a little bit. I just get my corners. So there's my first stitch and there we are. And I do that in this one as well. And I just grab my my end, leave a nice long tail to secure that, and I just bring my loop through and go in every kind of uh, making sure that they're the, they're together, and I bring that through and I slip stitch. I don't know if you saw that. I'll do it again. I did move my camera, so let's move it over this way a little bit. So again, I just go in to my next stitch at the very end and the corresponding one the other side, which is nice and easy to spot because it's orange on this one. Yarn over, pull it through and pull it through that loop. So I slip stitch it. Again, I go into this one and when you're holding it yourself, it's far easy to see. And I go, go through that one as well. See the yellow one? I'll just zoom in a little bit. I don't want to zoom too much because it, it's easy to go off. And I pull that through. See what I mean? When it's zoomed too much, it's very easy to lose where you are. So I go into my next stitch, obviously into the very end part. And again into that one, the corresponding one the other side. Yarn over. I can get it through. And slip stitch it. So it just ends up because I'm doing it a little bit, as my dad would call it, cack-handedly, because I'm showing you, um, it's not as neat as it would be if I was just sitting there on my chair holding it. But you just make a nice, there you are, like a, like a, it goes like a chain up one end. But really, all you're getting is an edge like this one, all the way around. I think it just finishes it nicely. It just kind of gives you that that edge. I'm not sure if I actually went round and did a... I think I did. I went round the whole uh, of this one and, and did a single crochet and went through the tops of the single crochet on those. But they were smaller. 
this one's wider so I don't really need to do that but if you felt that you wanted to do that if it was um, narrower and you, it, you thought it might look better then by all means you can so just go through each side but hold it this way I might get my yarn tangled come out and then you can see quite easily which is the next ones to go in it's difficult with the camera in between it but there we are just pull it through and slip stitch again into the next one all the way through so you've got both of them yarn over and slip stitch so I'm going to do that all the way round like a horseshoe it's a, and it obviously when you get to this part you're just going along your top edge <clears throat> it's ever so simple just catching both sides nothing um, difficult about it just going through each corresponding side sorry I'm wobbling my camera still zoomed in and slip stitch and there we are once I pull that open a little bit and then you just get this nice kind of edge that you're pinching you see and it comes like a bump so you get that nice kind of ridged border around the outside if you wanted to do those like single crochet all the way around double crochet uk single crochet us all the way around that's what it would look like but i don't feel i have to do it with this one this yarn is so much bulkier than that yarn that one um was um that uh was it called magic aaron which i got um from pound stretcher where these aaron cakes are much thicker in um in the yarn itself so I don't think I need to do that with these. So just carry on all the way around. Zoom out a little bit, it's easier. All the way around, getting the corresponding one of each side and, and get that. So once you've got all the way around to this end, you end off stuffing your cushion and sew it up. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'm gonna go all the way around my two sides and I shall see you when I get back to this point so I've made it all the way around catching that edge I'm going to cut off a long tail and just do an end off cinch that down so that will get sewn in now what I do is just get this cushion and pop it in there it's a bit difficult to do this on camera so I'm going to pause the video a second Okay, so that's that's all in. It's nice and snug. Um, I'll just lift it up and show you. It does go in. It's all nice and snug. It does work its way looser. So um, just got to get out one of these. Nice big eye. And cut myself a nice long sewing up thread. And thread all this needle. And you can, obviously, if you are way more patient than I, I'm just going to pop all my ends inside. And then I'm going to just whip stitch. Just um, going to secure it first. Don't have to be ultra precise. Going to just leave a long thread in case it comes out and then I can sew it in. Just going to put a double knot in there. As you can see, I am not a seamstress. So it is a snug fit, but that's what we want. And I'm going to just get the end out of the way. I'm just going to catch each one all the way along like this and the next one and sew that up just like that and um, I know it notices but because it's a variegated yarn it's it's not too too much of a problem and plus it you can just put this this is only a cushion 
for the back of the garden on the chair so I would just put that part that's at the back and I have one on top of the other and they just sit there at the back and if I need to I can undo it take it out to wash it so I just constantly all the way along whip stitch put it nice and tight and I'm going to close that whole edge so I'm just going to pause the video now and I'm going to sew this all the way along it feels rather tug, uh, snug and tight not tug and snight but snug and tight but it does give um, they all become a bit loose in the end so um, I'm just going to pause the video now and tack kind of over sew that all the way um, along the edge so I'm almost there and what I've done is um, at both ends I just caught that um, end to sew in and um, just securing that in there so um, you couldn't really see that one that end this one's popping up a little bit because I'm trying to show you how I'm doing it so I'm just going over those ends as well almost to the end so I'm just going to pause the video again um, because it's easier to put it on my lap to do this so I've made it all the way to the end and all I'm going to do now is over this part here just secure my end it's getting a bit curly just by making a little knot through it going back through its loop and then I'm just going to bury this inside go all the way along and come out the other side just tuck that in there and turn it over because it's come out that side and I'm just going to go back and bury it again on the reverse side that's it and then just snip it off pull in it a little bit so it's stuck inside and there we are we've got our stuffed cushion and it as I say it's a little bit tight at the moment and there's our nice kind of oh, where am I edges all the way around see there it is um, it just looked like it's fit to burst in but the yarn does give after a little while so um, I can't zoom out anymore but that's that's my finished cushion so that's how you can um, judge how to do your shaping and uh, to, f to make a cushion and uh, if you don't want to be bothered with zips and all of that you can just sew it like this like I do little cheat way and then you can easily see um, if you're using all one color then you'll disguise it an awful lot better but you can just about you can just see that over sewing there but as I say that is at the back of my seat and this is the front so um, after a while it starts to give and even out quite a bit so thank you for watching if you haven't already don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be informed when there are new videos so thank you so much and i'll see you on the next one bye for now